All right, let's do this live with YouTube Gaming, and we are here to talk about all things in the video game news world, as always. And joining me to kick off the show, we got my old buddy from GT, Brandon Jones from Easy Allies. What's up, Brandon, buddy? It's great to have you back. It's great to be here. And congrats on an awesome year for Easy congrats Allies. Congrats on this lots awesome of show. Well, thank you. Me. We got lots of good stuff. Now we'll get to the news. All right, we've also got <laughs> Emily Kelly joining us from Wrong Button Media. Emily, great to have you with Hi, us. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us live on the show. And returning again, we just can't get enough of them. Maddox is here from the best page in the universe. Yes, sir. Very Matt addictive. Matt Pat introduced us, and yeah. now you're, uh, you're part of the family. Great, too. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, it has been a busy week in the world, of course, and also in the world of video game news headlines. So let's get to our first topic. Monday was November 7th, a.k.a. N7 Day, for Mass Effect fans. And to help celebrate the occasion, BioWare gave us a brand new cinematic trailer for Mass Effect Andromeda, which is coming out next spring. Uh, you know, people saw this online. They were expecting a lot of N7 Day. We also announced that the first gameplay from uh, Mass Effect will be at the Game Awards, live right here on YouTube on December 1st. And I can tell you guys that it's going to be a very lengthy sequence that you'll see, you know, five plus minutes of stuff from Mass mm -hmm. Effect. So we got a lot of cool stuff happening um, this year at the show. But let's talk about um, Mass Effect in the trailer. Uh, this is a game that, you know, I think a lot of fans have been wondering about for a while. Jones, we saw a trailer at E3, but coming off, you know, Mass Effect 3, this is sort of a, not a Commander Shepard game, it's a right. whole new experience. What's your take on what they showed on Monday? Were you blown away? Were you skeptical? I, I wasn't. It, yeah. it's, it's tough because it's tough when you take a trailer just by itself. Yeah. And, you know, a trailer can be one thing. You know, if you look back at a campaign 10 years later for a game that you loved, it's hard to pick out when that trailer came out and what, yeah. and what people were looking forward to. And I think that one of the big things for me is I, I need character. I need to know who these faces are. And I think we've seen some kind of flashes at, at characters we're going to get to know. But, like, we don't get any names in this. We don't get any kind of clue into what type of person we're going to be filling. Uh -huh. And so, uh, yeah, I think it was exciting but just kind of bland for me it, you know it's not the commander shepherd trilogy we know about Ryder and this new character uh emily are you a mass effect fan i full disclosure i'm full-on bioware trash okay i love bioware <laughs> everything yeah. to do with bioware yeah so mass effect like changed my life okay as a gamer All right. so i am excited to see where they're going to take the series next but I, i'm with brandon i mean it's just kind of hard to judge of right i'll miss everyone you know like i'll I miss know. my space boyfriend garris yeah you know? so, i know right all the cast characters not you know casey hudson not at the helm it's a yeah. new team in montreal mac walters is involved who wrote the last game yeah. or the last uh you know uh, trilogy but you're right i think this is a game you know on a new engine so it looks you it know, looks Fantastic. Awesome, right? So it's on Fro Frostbite, Frostbite now. Frostbite is fantastic. Exactly. So that looks good. But yeah, I'm really curious about like how it's going to play. And N7 Day is a big day for the Mass Effect community. I think I felt like people were a little disappointed they wanted more on N7 Day. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But it, yeah. it, it, I think they're being optimistic because the game was yeah. supposed to come out for the holiday season right. this year. And they've pushed it back to spring. And I think they're kind of trying to like batter it a little uh -huh. bit to like build the hype. It's kind of hard to have hype with games these days. I know. So That's right. No, and you're right. Even though it's coming in the spring, I see, I see a lot in my feed of people saying, is it really coming in the spring? They haven't shown a lot. And they had that little tech demo they did at the PS4 Pro mm -hmm. launch where that wasn't even really gameplay. Like there was no combat, no nothing. It was just sort of showing off the engine a little bit. So we'll see. Maddox, uh, how, how is Mass Effect going to rate in the universe for you? Or does this, is this convince you that you want it more or less? Uh, okay, so I'm, as a not a fan of the Mass Effect series, yes. I watched this trailer and I thought it looked super cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I was going to play Ma the Mass Effect series, true story. I went to Amazon and I was looking at the reviews. Of, and I started with Mass Effect 3 for some reason. Yeah. And everyone was complaining about the ending. Yes. I was like, well, i got to read this. Spoiled it. And then it, it, <laughs> I read that it like kind of spoils the others in the series, so I never played it. So okay. I think this might be a good introduction. Fresh start. Fresh start, yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. The monsters look really cool, the big ones. Yes. I'm a big fan of big monsters, full okay. disclosure. Pacific Rim, <laughs> Godzilla, yeah. King Kong, I love them all. So No, it, it, it looks absolutely beautiful, and I think the big question a lot of folks have is, you know, how, how much RPG and action will it be? There's going to be vehicles in it. You know, what's going to happen with multiplayer? There's so many elements to this. And you're right, Emily, with a game that's supposedly coming in the spring, no one's ever really seen it, right? It's been pretty protected. Yeah. Even last year at E3, there was kind of a teaser video. This year at E3, there was another video. And seven days here, I think the fans have been have been hyped up now. They just yeah. want to see the game. I think yeah. those videos get them in trouble a little bit. EA's yeah. kind of been doing. They did the same with Battlefront, where it's like, here's kind of a trailer. Here's people yeah. at their desks, maybe working. We don't know. Right. And so by the time you finally get to that trailer, even if it's just a normal trailer that's kind of reaffirming some of the things you believe, showing you some fun new monsters, it's not enough. So we've already seen three advertisements for this game. So we're expecting this to be a little bit bigger because you've had this time. 
where it's just kind of your generic, here's, here's an introduction to this world, we'll explain more later. And I think we need a little bit more. All right, well, we will see what they have for us. Uh, we asked everyone online uh, what was their excitement level after the latest trailer. Uh, we got a response right there of what people have been saying. So it's, uh, it's amazing to see that fans are kind of, you know, look, looking at it from both perspectives, wondering uh, what's going on. So, all right, well, we got much more coming up uh, about Mass Effect. As I mentioned, at the Game Awards on uh, December 1st, we will have the first gameplay of Mass Effect. You don't want to miss it. And you, of course, can watch that live on YouTube uh, starting at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific with a pre-show. All right, moving on to our next news topic, franchise fatigue. There have been some AAA games released so far this year that aren't exactly flying off store shelves as in previous years. Titanfall 2, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, uh, they're both not meeting sales expectations. In the UK, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare sales are down 50% compared to last year's Black Ops 3, and that was even down significantly from the previous year. Uh, Titanfall 2, which I think is a phenomenal game and has an awesome campaign to it, uh, it's undersold the original, even though the sequel is also available on the PlayStation 4. Um, let me start with you, Emily, on this. Why, why do you think there's this drought of sort of game sales? I mean, even November, it's like there's Dishonored coming out uh, today, tomorrow. Uh, then you got Watch Dogs this week, and then the rest of this, November, there's really not that much. I mean, there's Final Fantasy at the end of the month. But why do you think there's this, is there a fatigue? Like, are people done playing these shooters, or what do you think's happening? I mean, it's hard for me because I am not a first-person shooter gamer, right. typically. I mean, I, I played Halo back in the day and a, and a few of the Call of Duties. So, I mean, if you like those games, you might not be as fatigued as, right. as other people. But at least for me, like, I'm like, a, 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 another one, like, again. Like, Battlefield, at least, is interesting. I mean, we've never really seen this kind of setting before. Right. World War One is one of the bloodiest, just, like, inhumane wars we've ever fought mustard gas and cavalry and bayonets and stuff so i guess that's a little you know it, it's on the more interesting side right and it's you know call of duty it's like how many times are you going to kill nazis or like guys <laughs> in a city or take over an airport yeah no you're something. right and that's like you know certainly the call of duty franchise it's more the same. I haven't played the Infinite Warfare campaign yet. I don't know if you have you. Uh, I haven't finished it yet. Yeah. How is it? Is it, uh, more it, it it's, it's good. No, it's, it's definitely different from from Call of Duty. But I think I mean Titanfall makes a ton of sense for me. Yeah. I mean it's just it's it's wedged in between these two games that I think any any shooter fan would have argued would have performed right. better than than Titanfall. There's so much, right? I mean shooters this year. There's a lot. I mean even with Doom, you could argue Overwatch. Shoot, I mean there's just yeah. so many different games. This is a fantastic year for yeah. shooters. You, you, you like now that we're you know getting into November December. Like it's always the time to look back and look at the genres and like this yeah. was the year for quality shooters. I agree. And I think. I think that's partly the issue is that probably people, a lot of people, are really surprised at Overwatch and are fine with that right now. Like, they're yeah. still playing that. They're still enjoying I it. I agree. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not surprised. But specifically, I don't know if theme really plays too much into um, why Call of Duty's not performing. Because right. Battlefield really brought the very interesting thing uh -huh. this year. And I, yeah, it's just interesting that, like, you just hear these, you know, gamers maybe, they said maybe they're still playing Overwatch and they're like, you know, fewer games. They don't need to buy a new game. But I do think there's not a lot of brand new, like, intellectual properties and like even all the shooters overwatch was fresh right mm -hmm. all these other ones same games again and titanfall 2 maybe there's a bit of that maddox i mean do you do you find yourself drawn to like oh it's this is call of duty i gotta play it or is there a fatigue no there's absolutely fatigue um i don't feel like there's enough innovation in first person shooters especially when it comes to weapons any kind of realistic weapons ultimately comes down to a bullet that i can't see that i'm shooting i like to play with physics uh like right. the orb weapon in Half-Life 2 where you bounce it around the walls mm -hmm. and we were just playing uh, this, the uh, screen, screen yeah. cheat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The orb weapons are super fascinating. It opens up all sorts of interesting gameplay. Now that's what I want to see. Everything feels kind of samey. I want to see a little bit more innovation yeah. in first person shooters. All right, well, we'll have to see, I guess, what happens with all shooters moving forward. But uh, <laughs> it's but even just game sales in general, right? It'd be mm -hmm. interesting is this fall, like normally November, we're getting ready for game awards and there are all these massive games coming out in November. Next couple weeks, kind of quiet. Yeah, uh, J January and February are huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's weird to see the beginning start off with such a bang in All so right. many different genres. Well, let's talk about another big thing that happened in November, and that is BlizzCon, which help happened last weekend. Uh, and there wasn't really any big shocking news. Uh, Hearthstone will have a new expansion, the Mean Streets of Gadgetzan. Uh, Overwatch announced Sombra, uh, what well, was officially unveiled after a lot of leaks. Um, but beyond that, no, you know, massive announcements of, you know, Warcraft 4 or, you know, Starcraft right. 3 or who knows. Um, you know, Blizzard consistently cranks out amazing games that are getting better and better. And that may be enough for some fans. You can't expect this massive scale announcement every year at BlizzCon. Uh, but Maddox, uh, when they throw a big event like this, fans get really hyped. Uh, there was, I think, a little bit of backlash that they, you know, 
they just didn't have the news. And uh, having done a lot of BlizzCons over the years, uh, until I split with them, it was sort of a, a situation that it seemed like, you know, there were years where they didn't always have breaking news. Uh, same caliber like an Overwatch reveal. What's your take on Blizzard? Are you worried about Blizzard? Oh boy, man, that's a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. Anytime they have this huge BlizzCons or any kind of conventions yeah. like that, I mean, it's kind of like the 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 approach that Apple took. Apple used to be part of uh, the all the tech consumers, and they would yeah. uh, excuse me, the tech companies, and they would have their press releases all at the same time. Yeah. They did something very smart, and they branched off, and they had the Apple the yeah. the Apple uh, uh, franchise. They set their timetable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now uh, BlizzCon has that exact same thing. It's a huge missed opportunity every time yeah. if they're not re releasing something super big and exciting. Although Sombra was pretty cool, but uh, again, like I guess the Russian hackers got hell got a hold of the and that's great. It's, it's hard to keep secrets. Uh, Emily, for you, Blizzard, BlizzCon, were you disappointed when you went and saw the headlines? I mean. A little bit. Again, it's just hard. I mean, yeah. ga great games take a lot of time to make. You can't expect someone like Blizzard to have a, a game out every year or two years. Yeah. Um, for me, the, the most exciting thing that came out of BlizzCon, besides all the cosplay, I'm a cosplayer, so I love all of the What's the your Blizzard amazing. cosplay? I don't do any. Well, okay, so I did uh, Retro Diva for uh -huh. Comic-Con, so okay. that's my only Blizzard one. Yeah. I didn't go this year, but it was really great to see all the amazing armor builds and stuff. But yeah. for me, the most exciting thing that came out of it was the Overwatch League. Uh -huh. um, I think esports are the future, and I love the way that they're trying to make it more like traditional sports of you play for a city, not just some, you know, 20-something former players team that and you, you get a salary and you get a salary yeah. you're an employee of blizzard and and they're really trying to make this um they're trying to do it right mm -hmm. uh and that's really exciting for me i love these words <laughs> absolutely uh jones blizzcon gotta bring it you're gonna okay. have your own event it kind of reminds me of bethesda this year at e3 like it, it, was, it was it was exciting they had great announcements they definitely brought new stuff that we were not expecting it just wasn't as good as the year before that and the first thing I thought when I found, when like, oh no, Bethesda's coming back, we're gonna have another press conference at E3, I was like, oh, well they must. They wouldn't be doing it unless they were gonna top what they did last year. Yeah. And so I think it's, it's tough because it's impossible not to have those expectations. It's like we're going back to BlizzCon, oh my god, they announced these new franchises, who knows what's gonna happen. And I don't know what you do as a member of BlizzCon to kind of come out and be like, it's not gonna be as cool. That sounds like suicide, <laughs> well, but like, you kind of have to set you know, expectations that way if you don't care. Like if right. Blizzard is reading all this news and they don't care, then we're no, fine. No, no, look, I think part of it is, and I, I go that through that with the Game Awards, where it's like every year, it's like, how are you going to top yourself? You bring what it are you every but, year. but it's like, I don't make the game. So it's sort of like, you hope the you developers the are going to show up. But it's like, yeah, <laughs> but it's one of those things that it, it's a little challenging. Yeah. Because Blizzard may, I mean, I think they probably sit there in the weeks leading, and it's like, yeah, we don't really have everything, but like they set this event, you know? six or eight months in advance, or who knows, maybe there was something they were about to announce, but then like three weeks out, they're like, ah, it's not ready. And that's always the heartbreaking thing. It's like you're doing this event, and the community is there. It's still a great chance yeah. to get oh, all the fans together. Oh, that's the best together. thing about it, I think. And right. so if you're still using it as a community thing, that's okay if you're going to be a little light on the announcements. But if you don't say anything, and you're like, we'll see what we do tomorrow, then we're always going to expect something huge. Because yeah. you're being coy about it, you know. I know. So did you go, Maddox? Uh, no, I didn't, but it's like you have your own birthday party. Bring uh -huh. your cake, you know, have a yeah. cake there. <laughs> yeah. What are people showing up for? I know, yeah, it's one of those ones that is, uh, well, we'll see. And the thing is, you know, they'll probably be doing a BlizzCon again next year. Maybe next year there'll be even more and bigger announcements. And uh, it, it feels like a lot of the teams now are working on new projects at Blizzard. And, and I think yeah. Overwatch was the type of game that really invigorated that company because of the excitement around it, new IP, something new. And it had been, you know, I think it was like 17 years since their last kind of brand new IP. So it'll be interesting to see like what they do with that uh, moving forward, or maybe there'll be a brand new game, and also on console in a big way. First time a lot of console fans probably yeah. went to BlizzCon because Overwatch is out for that. So we will see. All right, well, uh, let's move on now. We like to highlight up and coming YouTube creators doing awesome new things in and around the gaming universe. And right now we're gonna meet Jera Saval. Now, Jera Saval creates really amazing DIY projects based off weapons and items found in video games and comic book movies. He uses his knowledge of rocket science. That's right, rocket science to create real life, full functioning weapons. This is insane stuff. He's created a working super sledgehammer and power fist inspired by Warcraft, or sorry, by Fallout 4. We're off Blizzard on the Bethesda <laughs> Fallout 4. He also made an incredible working replica rocket launcher found in Doom. Uh, this stuff is incredible. This reminds me of the old FPS Russia videos, but with... Uh, <laughs> A little more diversity in the types of uh, items he creates. And of course, if you do check out his page and want to create some DIY weapons of your own, this is our legal warning, don't. <laughs> Just enjoy his work via YouTube and leave the danger to uh, 
Jeras. This is insane. Well, you guys got to go check out his channel. <laughs> but uh, certainly has a lot of fun. A little, little too high risk for me on live with YouTube gaming. But it, it's all there on YouTube. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much, guys, for popping by. Uh, fun to see you guys playing in the pre-show. And we'll be seeing more of you, I know, throughout the show. Uh, and stay put.